So a popular question here, which is what is my advice about list building from ground zero, maybe like three steps. So to first clarify what, what list building means, um, people typically basically mean, how do I grow my audience from, from zero? And list building means people are thinking about growing their email list subscribers to their email newsletter from zero. So I think there's a couple of um, clarifications. One is that I look at list building more holistically because in, 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 in our world today, people consume your message and your content, not just via email, obviously, right? So they might be doing it. Uh, they might be in Instagram, you know, surfing Instagram, or they might be watching videos on YouTube, or they might really enjoy listening to podcasts. So my question to you is, first, have you surveyed your uh, ideal audience, how they consume content? That would be, really be my first step. And then just be so fixated on building an email list, which, which we'll talk about briefly as well. Um, because wherever your audience likes to consume content, um, you know, you, you might want to think about showing up there too. Because for example, uh, this is my, my example, I am much likely, you're much more likely to catch my attention on a podcast than just about anywhere else. Um, maybe, maybe on, uh, maybe on YouTube as well. Uh, but for, that's that's my example. But for many others, they, they're much more likely to catch them on uh, on Instagram. I I never open my email newsletters. See, that's so it's like if I join your email list, you, you'll never I'll never open yours probably because I just archive everything like that. Ah, it's like ah, end of the day, I don't want to read newsletters. But I'm while I'm walking the dog. I love to listen to something or watch it watch a YouTube listen to a YouTube video uh, when I'm walking the dog. So that's an example where it's like list building needs to be thought of more holistically. But secondly, it's like George, George, just just give me the straight answer about how do I get more subscribers on my email list? Just just come on, cut cut, cut the crap, George. How do I get you know, more email subscribers. So first of all, the people who are using opt-in bribes to grow an email newsletter, in my opinion, are growing a bad, uh, growing a suboptimal email newsletter that your deliverability is going to go down over time. What is an opt-in bribe? You've all seen this. You go to a website, maybe there's a pop-up, maybe there isn't, but it's like, uh, you know, sign up, put your email address here to receive my wonderful video series or my special report, or I don't think people say that anymore, right? The special report used to be so big in the 90s and the 2000s, um, or, or to get some other amazing thing by putting your email address in. And by the way, I'm going to add you to my ongoing email newsletter. It might be a checkbox or some other like small, per, you know, small permission thing. And that's how a lot of people grow their email list is by using an opt-in bribe is what I call it. And that's what they call it. And uh, so think about the psychology of this. I, I go to your newsletter, I, I go to your site, like, oh, okay, yeah, I want that tool or I want that article, or, I want that video. Okay, so I put my email address in. Am I thinking about all the ongoing emails you're gonna be sending me? Am I, am I looking forward to that? Maybe, maybe not. So what I do on my email, uh, on my website, as you'll notice, is that um, when you go to my website, first of all, there's no pop-up, okay? And second of all, am I, want, am I trying to get you, do you see anywhere to put your email address in? No. What am I trying to get you to do? I'm trying to get you to feel my energy. Hi, I'm George Cow. And Number one. Okay, I don't know, you, I, didn't, I didn't share my computer sound so you couldn't hear me talking on my video. I'm getting you to feel my energy to see if we match energetically. And secondly, I'm getting you to say, why don't you just take my best stuff my best free stuff, and hopefully you can you can benefit from it. Like read my best article. <laughs> I would rather you do that, and hopefully watch my art, watch my video uh, if you can. But you see what so. And then if you if you're really into that stuff, you're like, wow, this is really good stuff. You're naturally probably going to say, well, oh, he has a newsletter. You click here, and then now you are. I even give you an archive of newsletters if you want to see what the sample that you're going to be getting. And then now you can, and I ask you a bunch of questions. This is a no-no for most marketers. No, George, you, you don't, don't ask for anything other than email address. You're going to get fewer opt-ins. You're asking them for their name and how they discovered you and even asking them what frequency, that's crazy. But what's not crazy is my open rates are not crazy, right? Or sorry, my open rates are crazy because they are 33 to 39% open rate on a, a newsletter with 4,000 subscribers, right? 4,000, I used to have uh, 15,000 subscribers. I actually removed most of them because I built most of my 
uh, was 13, 13,000 actually was when I removed it. I built my 13,000 email list by using opt-in bribes. And I, my, de my deliver, my open rate was like 15% or 12%. And it was, ke it kept going down over the year. I'm like, oh, over years, I'm like, oh my gosh, because um, anyway, so that's, <laughs> now you understand my logic for it. So, so again, you see how hard it is for me to answer the question, how the hell do you build an email list? Okay, so, so fine, George, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna think more holistically, fine. I'm gonna think about maybe not having an opt-in bribe and having more thoughtful um, email joining. Okay, fine, but still, how the hell do I build my email list? Here's how you do it. You provide content that people actually would say, oh, I can't miss this stuff. This stuff is so good. You see what I mean? If you put stuff out there that's so good, well, how do you create such good content? By using this, all of you, all, all of you who are watching, you can create content that people say are so good. Well, how do I do that? You go through the three stages of content. Google it, three stages of content creation. If you work yourself way through the three stages of content, you are going to, by default, create content that's so good because you have that practice. It's so good that people say, well, I have to join this, this person's email list. That's what they're going to say. This is why, like I showed you earlier, <clears throat> people want to join this stuff, my email list, because when they first come to my um, website, they are probably reading stuff or watching stuff. They're like, well, I got to join this guy's thing, right? So number one, <clears throat> okay, long story short, you build an email list by creating great content and distributing your great content, probably using ads or using um, uh, collaborations for others to promote your content. And three, <clears throat> you can, of course, occasionally, wherever you are sharing your content, you occasionally let people know that you have an email newsletter. So wherever you show up, whether you show up on a podcast or YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, you let people, hey, folks, did you know, you know, you can do this once a month if you want to. Did you know I have an email newsletter where I share my best stuff? best free stuff. You might want to know that. So that, that's, that's one way of growing it. Another way of growing it, that's uh, the fourth way uh, is, is a little bit uh, going rogue, especially for GDPR rules. Uh, so for those of you in Europe, tread lightly on this. But what I do is I automatically add my course buyers to my monthly email newsletter. I automatically do it. I auto actually, I automatically add my course buyers, all of you here uh, who, who bought the planning course, to my monthly content newsletter and my, uh, my launch newsletter, which is I send like two or three emails per month specifically saying, hey, here's my upcoming course. That's my launch newsletter. And then I have my content newsletter, which I send once a month. Most people, uh, I have two versions. I have the once a month and the once a week. Anyway, I don't want to complicate it. Basically, the, the, the key is uh, if, you, if you want to be a GDPR outlaw like me, then you can automatically add your buyers, your clients, your customers to your monthly newsletter. This is the key. You don't add them to something automatically where they're gonna start receiving a bunch of emails from you that they didn't expect. They only receive my monthly content newsletter and twice a month I say, hey, here's my upcoming course. People don't seem to mind being added to that either. Of course, I usually get some unsubscribes, but nowhere, a, a very reasonable rate of unsubscribes that is very industry standard or even lower than industry standards. So, so it's things seem, seem to be working well with my email. So therefore, I have an email newsletter that has higher that has, okay, industry standard open rates are about 20 to 25%. Let me say that again, most of my peers are getting between 20 to 25% email open rates, I get 33 to 39%. So what I'm doing seems to be working. And people um, share my newsletter and things like that too. So anyway, I hope this is helpful.